What's up, everybody, and welcome to this free online Eleco session on how to become a YouTuber. And as you can see, we are here in the Eleco office, or are we? I'm at home, just like the rest of you. I'm under quarantine. I wouldn't be at the office, but try to make it look like I was. Now, this is actually not my living room either. This is exactly where I am, in front of a screen screen. So let's take a little bit of a journey here. Actually, let's change that. That's better. Let's take a little bit of a journey here together on how you can avoid the mistakes I made when first starting out as a YouTuber and tips and tricks on how to potentially um, reach your audience as quickly as possible and have a good time while you're doing it. So that's enough of this recording. Mike, take it over. All right, guys, welcome to this afternoon session here for the uh, becoming a YouTuber. So just a little intro there, just to kind of make it a little interesting, try to grab your attention as quickly as possible. Uh, it looked a little choppy on my end. I don't know if it's because um, my computer's converting another video right now from a previous class. Hopefully that is not causing some issues. Um, but yeah, welcome to this afternoon session. I'm Mike, I'll be your little instructor for the next hour or so. Um, we are here to talk about exactly uh, what we just heard, okay? Um, now I've, become, I've started my YouTube channel uh, close to nine months ago now, uh, and uh, slowly, you know, but surely got more and more subscribers. And that's, that's one of the key things that we're gonna talk about is subscribers, and of course, um, views. Now, First off, you need to be passionate about this. Before we get started here, um, right off the bat, you need to enjoy doing and working with video. If you are going to have any type of success, or again, it's something you wanna definitely enjoy doing because it is um, a lot of work if, uh, if uh, you want to create high impact videos. Um, but before we get to that, let's uh, launch our little presentation here minimize this one here that my colleague wrote and i'm going to launch this one over here now before i actually jump in the uh the session here i just want to confirm you guys can hear my voice and see my screen before i continue on here today so there's a way to give me a quick thumbs up or a chat message just so that i am aware that everything is working perfectly so at least a few of you could potentially just say yes i can hear you cole alex thank you so much perfect wonderful out of curiosity was that video a little choppy it looked choppy on my end for some reason That's too bad. I should have stopped the recording from this morning's session. Okay, so we're here to talk about YouTube. Obviously, uh, 1.7 billion users, active users every month. So it's kind of crazy. Um, it's obviously the second most popular website in the world after Google.com. YouTube is the number two search engine and the number two most visited website every single day. So obviously, if you wanna put some content out there, there is a good chance of people seeing it. If you create some high end content, hopefully you can potentially impact a few people out there and create your own little fan base and potentially, uh, potentially again, uh, make it big, who knows. First things first is, again, I'm Mike. I'm the lead web instructor at Elco. Been with the instructor team, uh, with the Elco team for six years now, and instructor in general for close to 10 years. Um, and uh, like I said, started a channel called Tesla Canadian Dad about uh, nine months ago. Uh, video has always been my passion, so it's something I definitely wanted to uh, get back into. I started as a way to distract myself from other things in life and it's done a fantastic job at doing so so let's talk about becoming a youtuber 
and uh, what we can do to potentially make it a little bit easier for you guys to get started versus you know how I got started. Now we're going to talk about equipment setup a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk about audio. This is definitely something that I definitely want to emphasize that you do want some great audio. We'll talk about resolution for videos, 1080 versus 4K. Talk about lighting, editing tools, and then some YouTube must know laws. So again, some some of the laws that we're going to talk about is the thousand subscribers, the 400, the 4,000 minutes watch time and the 365 day rule we'll talk about creating some impactful thumbnails because it's the first thing that the user sees and it's the element that's going to make people want to watch your video including a compelling title but the thumbnail is even more important than the title itself when it comes to click-throughs search it's all about the title but the click-throughs getting people to actually click on your video um, the thumbnail is insanely important. We'll talk about if you are going to potentially make money on YouTube, how much are you most likely to make per uh, thousand views? We'll talk about how to potentially hook the users as early as possible, the 10 minute rule. And again, potentially a great way of getting started is your social media, um, social network, I should say, uh, circle. So again, those are the things we're gonna discuss here today. I just want to mention that before I start talking about equipment and things like that, you guys are here to learn. You guys have a question, ask away. I definitely want some back and forth in today's session. So don't be shy. If you have a comment or question, um, uh, use the chat. Or again, you can always enable your microphone and join the conversation. Okay. So that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. Uh, the first thing I kind of want to talk about here today is your equipment. Now, you can obviously um, buy a camera, uh, but you don't necessarily need to. As long as you have some sort of device that can record video, that's a great start. Okay, so one of the first thing I'm going to say is that, yes, I do recommend shooting at 1080, uh, which is the kind of standard resolution nowadays. Um, and uh, it is going to give you a little bit more flexibility if you are going to shoot at a higher resolution like 1080 versus 720p. And if you're shooting in 480, um, I don't know what you're doing. It's 2020, okay, you shouldn't be doing that. Uh, some people are still shooting at 720p. And on YouTube, again, it's good enough um, because most people, as you can see, are actually watching on their mobile device. So they won't be able to really see the whole resolution. But when you shoot at higher resolution, it is going to give you some flexibility. So I kind of recommend if you are going to buy a new camera that it shoots at least at 1080. And I'll be honest with you, it's gonna be hard to find a camera that doesn't shoot that at 1080 in 2020. Now, if you don't even wanna buy a camera, right? You just wanna get started. You wanna just to put your you know, foot, first foot forward and just kind of see how it goes, see how to get started. Use your phone. That's how I got started. Um, just started using my phone. I have an iPhone 10 and uh, has great video. Uh, there's some drawbacks, obviously, by using your phone. You can't use it uh, in your videos, which sometimes I wanted to because, again, uh, of my channel, I am a Tesla owner talking about Tesla, and the mobile app is obviously something that I kind of want to talk about, so I wasn't able to really use it uh, with my phone. But that being said, you, your phone is a great device nowadays, and if you have a modern phone in the last couple of years, it most likely has a pretty decent camera. The one drawback about smartphones is the microphone. And the one thing that you definitely want to have, as I'm going to talk about in just a moment, is good audio. And that's something I definitely struggled with early on, getting good audio for my videos. It's a lot of trial and error. Um, I purchased, I'm not joking, over five different microphones uh, to plug in my phone to try to improve the, the, the quality of the audio. People will be okay with okay video, but one thing that people will not do is listen or watch the video that has poor audio quality. It's, it's better to have great audio than great video. People just get annoyed with this, the bad audio and they'll, they'll stop watching fairly quickly. 
Now, other options, of course, for filming itself. You know, the GoPro 8 is a great camera if you're going to be doing a YouTube channel with a lot of traveling because uh, it's so compact, it's so small, and it has probably the best visual stabilization that I've seen out of any camera I've played around with. Um, I purchased it a while back because, again, it gives me the ability to put cameras on my car, and cars obviously have a lot of rumbling, but it creates the smooth, 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 smooth video. Now, there's some, again, drawback on there. The, the audio is not great from the GoPro, right? So I would not be using the onboard audio on the GoPro to record my audio for my videos. So that came, um, that left me with uh, mirrorless cameras. Now, mirrorless cameras are the new DSLRs, if you will. DSLRs are still great, um, but mirrorless cameras are a lot lighter. And because they're more compact, uh, it's easier to carry around. And uh, that's the one that I just made that big jump, that first big purchase here. Uh, I purchased a Canon M50, which is uh, the one of the first 4K Canon cameras that is a mirrorless camera. And uh, I'm going to show it to you a little bit later. But again, if I actually just go to it right now, it's going to, okay, this is the camera that I'm going to be using for uh, from this point on. And uh, it's the camera uh, that I made my last video with. Um, and I'm still, you know, learning how to use it, obviously. But um, yeah. So, to sum up, if you're just getting started, don't be afraid to just use your phone. But one of the things I do recommend, however, is that you upgrade the audio, the microphone. The great, not good audio is a must. So you want great audio, not just okay, not just passable. You want great audio. So avoid using internal mics. You can actually buy some pretty cheap um, onboard microphones or secondary or third party microphones they can add to your smartphone or you can add to your, uh, for example, your mirrorless camera. So the micro road microphone is a, a big popular one for YouTubers. Uh, if I just bring it up here. However, um, one of the things that here it is, okay? If you wanna go with a, maybe a cheaper route, you can see here, this is a $51 microphone that you can add onto your, um, your smartphone or your DSLR slash mirrorless camera. So for a pretty cheap price, you're gonna improve your audio dramatically, okay? So it is something that I do kind of recommend um, you do is improve your audio by purchasing one of these microphones. So the one on the left is the Booyah one. Uh, it's actually the one I've been using. And the one on the right is a little bit more expensive, okay? Um, again, we're talking about the micro road microphone. And if you are going to be filming outside, you are going to want a, a wind canceler. So this, again, will muffle or remove the wind from going into the microphone. And obviously I film a lot of car videos and a lot of that is outside, which is unfortunate right now, but hey. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a little bit of the equipment side of things, okay? Now let's talk about resolution, okay? 70% of YouTube views come from mobile device. 70% on a screen that's the size of your palm of your hand, right? So shooting in 4K is something that a lot of people, oh, you have to shoot in 4K, you have to shoot in 4K. Well, there's obviously some upside of shooting 4K, but there's a lot of downside of shooting 4K. And I'm gonna talk about the most important downside the computer that you're going to be editing your video with, can it handle 4K resolution? 4K means significantly larger file size and a lot more work for your computer to, to, to actually be able to edit the video. So you're gonna notice significant slowdowns if you are filming everything in 4K and trying to edit your video on a standard, computer that you just purchased, uh, maybe a few years old, maybe it's a lot of, you know, 10 years old, then you won't be able to do anything with that. Uh, so the one thing 
that you will potentially want to do if you do have a strong computer to do your edits with, you do want to film in 4K, it is going to give you more flexibility. And what does that mean? Because we have four times more pixels, for example, we have the ability to kind of zoom in four times without the image becoming pixelated. So it does give you a little bit of flexibility if you have a shot that's not really centered correctly, you can zoom it in and have a nice, clear, zoomed in version of your shot without, again, the image becoming all pixelated. So there is some advantage there when it comes to shooting in 4K. But not a must. And it's actually something that don't feel like you have to shoot in 4K, don't feel like you have to purchase a 4K camera. Most people, like I said, are watching on a small, tiny little device, potentially in the washroom, who knows? And uh, they're just watching on their small mobile, and they won't be able to notice the difference between 1080 and 4K. So do yourself a favor, make it a little bit easier for you to just work with the video, smaller file size, meaning potentially you won't have to buy more external hard drives and things like that. So if you get to go take a look at uh, my channel here, you're gonna notice that most of my videos are not 4K. I did a few of them in 4K, but then I ended up um, doing the rest of them in 1080 because it's just so much easier to work with. I actually purchased a MacBook Pro for this project and it's a pretty strong computer, but even with a strong computer, it slows down dramatically and you're waiting for the video to uh, render whenever you're doing some special effects or anything like that it's times 10 uh, you're waiting a lot more so there's a lot more waiting when it comes to um, 4k so uh, you're going to notice most of my videos now are just 1080 and a lot of youtube videos nowadays are 1080 and as of right now youtube is actually i think by default reducing the default resolution to 480 because everybody's online, everybody's streaming. So even less reason to, uh, to shoot in 4K right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a walkthrough about the behind the scenes YouTube when you, you, you have a YouTube channel. But before I get to that, I just wanna talk about the editing tools. Now there is a lot of different editing tools to edit your video in 2020. And it all depends on how serious you are or how um, much time you wanna spend learning a software. There is definitely a learning curve if you've never edited a video before. And there's luckily a website that you can go to for help. Yeah, you, cost, you, you guessed it, YouTube, right? So if you're editing your video on your mobile phone, well, again, every phone has a free internal application to edit your videos on there. Uh, they'd be a lot more simple, uh, usually not a lot of effects or anything like that going on, but it's free, right? And uh, you can do it on the go, you can edit your video on the go. Now, if you wanna do your editing on a computer, then there's three other applications I kinda wanna recommend here. Final Cut Pro is uh, for Apple computers, so you do need an Apple computer for this. And they just announced about 20 minutes ago, this is actually, I was just on Twitter before starting this session, I guess an hour ago now, um, that they are actually doing a 90 day free trial. I believe I said, I believe I saw 90 days and not 30 days, but either way, you have a significant amount of time to try it for free. They just announced it because of the quarantine. They figured people would have time to try it out. So you can actually try Final Cut Pro on a Mac for free today. Uh, typically it's $400 Canadian to purchase. Now Adobe Premiere Pro is of course the Adobe Suite software for video editing. And it's the one I use now. Um, I started with Final Cut Pro because Final Cut Pro has a simpler interface. It's easier to learn, I would say. But I wanted a little bit more power and also Adobe Premiere Pro seems to have a lot more videos on how to do things online. Uh, there's more a bigger community online for Adobe Premiere Pro. Even though the interface, in my opinion, is not as visually appealing with time, it's more flexible, if you if you will. Um, and again, it's a little bit more affordable to start 
and try using it, right? We're looking at $21 per month. Obviously, long term, Premier Pro would, will cost you more. But short term, if you want to just kind of tip your toe into all of this, Adobe Premier Pro is obviously uh, a cheaper option. Now, a new one that has kind of grown significantly recently is DaVinci Resolve. Now, I have not tried it uh, yet, and I'm not the, but I've heard great things about it. And a lot of people are jumping ship for Adobe Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve because of that con continuity, continuous $21 price, right? So again, different softwares out there. Now, if I were to just launch Premiere Pro and show you that this is the project that you guys saw this morning. Uh, very, very simple, um, not much to it here, as you can see. What's up everybody and welcome to this free online Eleco session on how to become a YouTuber. And as you can see, we are here in the Eleco office, or are we? I'm at home. Just so again, very, very simple. Now, if I go to one of the other projects I was working on, you can see that the timeline is a little bit more, there's a little bit more going on in this one. Okay, now this is not even close of my most comp uh, filled one, but I moved hard drives, so I can't really open up my older projects. Uh, but yeah, this is, again, uh, giving you the ability to edit your videos. Uh, there's a lot going on here, so there is a steep, learning curve when it comes to a software like Premiere Pro. It is, again, a pro editing tool. So if you find this overwhelming, I suggest trying out Final Cut Pro or even DaVinci Resolve as alternative. Now let's talk about YouTube must know logs. The thousand subscriber rule, the 4,000 public watch hours, okay, I said minutes earlier, right? it's hours, and 365 days. If you are intending to start a YouTube channel to make money, well, first and foremost, that shouldn't be your end goal because not everybody makes it big, right? Um, first and foremost, you won't make a penny until you hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours in 365 days. So if you don't hit all both those things in 365 days, you're not making any money. So YouTube is potentially adding um, ads before or after your video, not in the middle of the video, but before and after the video. Uh, but you're not making a penny off of it until you hit a thousand subscribers. So it is definitely something that's a little bit annoying, a little bit frustrating. Um, we're not talking about thousands, about thousands of dollars, however, because well, as we're going to talk about in just a moment, the amount of money you make per thousand views, well, we're talking about maybe hundreds, maybe thousands of dollars before you hit the thousand subscribers potentially. So if you take a look behind the scenes here uh, for mine, if I click on monetization, you can see that I have not reached this. So I have yet to make a dollar on YouTube as of today. And I'd rather not talk about how much I've spent on equipment and just again, to, to kind of try to make the videos a little bit more um, appealing and again, uh, a lot more engaging and higher quality by purchasing a lot of different things. Now, again, you don't have to do everything I did, obviously. Um, I, I'm passionate about this. I love working on videos, so I kind of always try to improve my videos. But as you can see here, I have reached the public watch hours by quite a bit, actually. I've surpassed it months ago but I'm still waiting for that thousand subscribers. And um, if you have a lot of friends and family, this is something I'm gonna talk about a little bit later, and you have a huge social online presence, that can dramatically help. Now, I have a hard time spamming. Um, this, is, this is my drawback. I don't like going on forums and putting my videos. Uh, I don't like spamming my videos everywhere. I do share it on my social media feeds, so my Facebook and my Twitter. But that's about it. Uh, so this is mostly all searches online on YouTube. Um, so very little amount of spam, almost none, honestly, because I just don't like the negative uh, feedback that you get from that. You might get more subscribers quicker, but there is obviously going to be people latching out saying that you're spamming their forum or, um, so this is all very uh, generated just by posting the video on YouTube and that's hoping people will find it. 
I'm sure some of you can come up with lots of creative ways to potentially get to that thousand subscribers a lot quicker by finding ways um, on the, the um, business side, if you will, to make more people see your video. Now, again, so still waiting for that thousand subscribers past the 4,000 public watch hours. And again, this needs to be done in 365 days, so a year. Okay. Now, if you take a look at some of the numbers from my videos, uh, my highest video to date is uh, the Tesla Model 3 Standard Rate Plus versus the Golf R. And it has 22,839 views. And then I have another couple that are over 20,000, then it drops to close to 10,000, and then lower and lower. Now, all of these are related to Tesla because this is what I know and I know well. And this is something that you definitely wanna do when you pick your subject for your video, you want to be able to know what you're talking about. Know your subject well, because people want reliable information. They want reliable information about what you're talking about. So pick a subject that you know and know well and that you're passionate about, and that's the big one. If you're not passionate about it, don't even bother because you're gonna lose interest and the users will lose interest as well. So I found a, a product, obviously, that I got obsessed with, learned everything there was to know about it because I wanted to purchase it in the first place. And then I'm like, okay, I love doing video. I've always wanted to find a reason to make videos, not necessarily on YouTube, but just make videos. And I found myself just, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the whole YouTube thing and go from there. And I started from zero subscribers and climbed to 800 subscribers about nine months. Can it be done quicker? Absolutely. Uh, is it guaranteed to be quicker? Who knows? There's a, a lot of people out there that have been years and have just a couple hundred uh, subscribers. So it does take quite a bit of effort. Um, and one of the things you do want to be ready for <laughs> is uh, not everyone is going to like what you make. Um, and that can be kind of harsh sometimes when you see a comment uh, below in the videos that is negative, uh, that can kind of ruin your day. So you can kind of, you have to kind of think about that before. Um, if you take a look at my most viewed video, it's actually the most disliked as well, uh, because again, it's comparing two cars and some people don't like the end result. So you, you get the dislike and that first dislike that you get is like, oh, you know, uh, why, you know, and how can I make it potentially better? But there's always, uh, there's always going to be haters out there, right? So Keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, there is obviously that negative feedback. And then there's a lot of positive things, right? Um, again, I like I said, I started this to as because as video is a passion, Tesla's became a passion, and uh, I wanted a, a distraction as well. So um, it was, became a great, you know, useful pastime for me. All right, enough about that for now. If I jump back into my little presentation here, let's talk about the thumbnails themselves. So the thumbnails are the little images that people see, right? Avoid making them fully clickbait. Now there's a fine line. You do want to entice the user to click on your video, but without making your thumbnail completely BS. Because at that point, your subscriber count won't go up because people won't trust what you are, um, what you're putting out there. Okay, so I've always tried to stay away from the whole clickbait side of things, and uh, but you do want to create a compelling thumbnail that will attract the users. And sometimes it's trial and errors. This is where you can potentially ask your family, ask your friends hey, should I put this thumbnail or this thumbnail? And send them a few different options and see what they say. See what they think about your thumbnail. And uh, try to avoid using just the default thumbnails that when you upload a video on YouTube, they're gonna suggest five different thumbnails. Don't use those. Create a thumbnail and put some content like text on the thumbnail because people will read the thumbnail before they read the, the title. And a lot of the times they won't even read the title. They're just going to go and 
kind of scroll, scroll, scroll until they see visually a thumbnail that is appealing to them. So potentially putting content on it to let the users know what it is, is uh, kind of an important thing. And you can use an application like Photoshop to do that, right? Um, now, not necessarily only Photoshop, there's lots of editing tools out there they use, but yeah. So this is, again, um, some people will like a thumbnail more than others. So it's trying to find exactly what, um, whoop, let's go back here. Trying to see here if I can just view my channel, not in here. So you can see the thumbnails a little bit better. Now, again, um, trying to find the right balance. I'm not saying I create the best thumbnails. There's what you don't want to do is just use one of the default thumbnails. So one of the things I noticed is if I put the car in the video, in the thumbnail, I'm more likely to get views. Okay, since I am a Tesla channel, people want to see Teslas. And uh, it's one of the things I noticed that people will more likely click on the video if they see the car itself in the video. Uh, so if I go and take a look at some Alex side of things, you can potentially see that the thumbnails with the car has more click-throughs. So people see it and then click on it um, a lot more than if the car is not present. So it is something I try to do is put the car in there. Now, that being said, depending on what your subject is, you also want to add potentially a little bit of information about what the video is about, even though it's in the title. The title will help. The title will help for the search. So the title will help for the search, but people don't actually read the titles. They're more likely to just look at the thumbnail. So it is something you want to spend a bit of time working on. And if a thumbnail doesn't work, if you feel like you're not getting the views you, you're usually getting, change it up. You can always change a thumbnail once you've created one. You launch your video and a couple of days go by and you don't get the uh, amount of views you usually get. Then change your thumbnail to something different. Try something new. It's actually something I tried with the latest video I made, which is completely unsuccessful so far, uh, because I went outside the scope, which is something I'm going to talk about. I went outside the scope of what I usually talk about. Okay, so I usually talk about Tesla. As you can see, all of these is related to Tesla. And the latest video, uh, which I released two weeks ago, is talking about smart home. And it's it's not grabbing my user's attention. Not that it's not good, people enjoy it when they watch it, but people are not watching it because again, most of my audience are interested in Tesla's, not tech for home. I thought it would be close enough and I even tried to put, as you can see, a little car, a little Tesla inside there, but it's still, again, something that's outside the scope of my regular content and um, I did not grab much attention from, from my latest, latest video. And of course, I'm still learning with this, right? Um, always learning, always trying to do different things. But the one thing that I always try to do is create high quality content with good audio, video, and I try to grab the user's attention as quickly as possible because most people don't actually watch the whole video as we're going to talk about a little bit later. All right. So to sum up, don't just get into YouTube just to make money. It's pretty hard to do so. Now, again, you can make it big. And I hope if you do start it, you do, you know, succeed. Uh, but few make it big, right? Now, it could be you. You typically make 7 to $10 every 1,000 views. So I have close to 100,000 views. And I haven't made a dime because I haven't passed this 1,000 subscribers. But that's $1,000. So obviously the amount of time I spend in this, it's not a legit business when you're starting out, that's for sure. So there's other ways that you can potentially make money off YouTube. And um, I've kind of started to, to trying out these different things. Uh, you can be an Amazon partner. So you suggest products to people in your video. And if people click through the links in the um, comment section and buy, 
uh, items from Amazon, you get a little bit of a kickback. You get a little bit of money back from that. Yeah, product placement, when you have enough views, people will actually call you uh, to talk about their products in your videos. There's partnerships as well that you can potentially do. And uh, I have received some free content, some free accessories for my car to review, to test out. Um, so I got a free wrap, a free uh, charging pad, um some free accessories as well for around the car nothing huge but hey there is a little bit of a, a neat thing when a company just contacts you out of nowhere and tells you hey um here's this free product can you review it for your youtube channel i mean it is a little bit neat so 50 to 60 percent of viewers leave by the halfway point so this is not just for me by the way this is on youtube in general okay um so you want to grab the user's attention as quickly as possible, and you want to get to the point as quickly as possible. Now, 70 to 80 range would be outstanding. If you're getting 70% of people going through the video, uh, or at the 70 mark, I should say, of the video, that's fantastic. Now, here's the funny part. An average mobile viewing session lasts more than 40 minutes. Just, just think about that for a second. People watch YouTube for 40 minutes at a time. Doesn't seem like it, but it's so easy to fall into the YouTube rabbit hole. You start watching a video and it's seven minutes. And then you watch another one and another one and another one. And you're more likely to watch more small videos than you are to watch one long video. So finding the right balance on how long to make your videos is really important. One of the things, however, is the 10 minute rule. And you're gonna see a lot of videos, if you haven't noticed yet, a lot of videos are around the 10 minute mark. And there's a, a, there's a reason for that. Videos longer than 10 minutes can be higher, uh, that's misspelled, I just noticed that. Videos that are longer than 10 minutes can be uh, higher monetized, is the word that should be there. And seem to be pushed more by YouTube's algorithm. So the YouTube algorithm tends to push videos that are a little bit higher than 10 minutes. And the reason for that is because you can add as many advertising videos in between your video, in, inside your video, when you reach the 10 minute mark. And because of that, YouTubers can make more money. So you'll notice that a lot of videos are 10 minutes, 11 minutes, 10 minutes and 50 seconds, 10 minutes and 20 seconds, just over 10 minutes so that they can put as many advertising in that video as possible well, without you know creating uh, frustration from the end user from always having to watch ads, but it gives them the ability to make more money. However, shorter videos get obviously more views uh, when it comes to the percentage of watched. So um, if uh, you want your user to watch the whole thing, a smaller video is more likely to be obviously fully viewed versus a longer video. So it's finding, as I said, the right balance um, between uh, uh, making the video too long and too short. Now, once again, if we go back just as me and as, as an example, if I go back to the channel one, if you take a look at the, Most viewed video is five minutes long, then it's 10 minutes and two seconds, 10 minutes and 50 seconds, seven minutes, 58, 10 minutes, 27. Um, and then again, uh, some of the lower ones, again, are two minutes and 21 seconds, three minutes and 55 seconds, but I think that is more related to the content. So you do wanna try to pass the 10 minute mark in case you ever become monetized you have the ability to earn a little bit more money and actually quite a bit more money because of those extra ads that you can put in your video. But if your content is not compelling for 10 minutes, you're, what's the point? Now, when it comes to sharing your content, if you do have the ability to share your content, this is the part that I wish I had maybe a bigger online circle, if you will. Um, to get you started because your friends and families, even though um, you know it's not easy to ask for help or sometimes it's, you, you might feel like you're annoying people to ask them for help, 
most people around you, they probably want to help you out. So they, they hopefully will potentially share your video, even though it's maybe not something that they're interested in. They might have friends that they're interested in. And again, maybe get started that way. Um, and they can actually give you ideas. So some of the videos I've made, I luckily have a younger brother that is really nice and really passionate about my YouTube channel and is coming up with some great ideas. So my most viewed video was 100% his idea, not mine, oh, actually my second most popular video, uh, which is what happens if somebody steals your Tesla? What happens if somebody steals your car? And as you can see, it was my highest video for quite a bit of time. At it reached 20,000 quite quickly um, compared to most other videos. And um, yeah, it wasn't my idea, it was his idea and uh, yeah. And uh, then another uh, gentleman asked me, hey, do you want to see which one of our car is faster? So we went on a closed road and uh, that was his idea. So the top two videos there didn't actually come from me. I was just listening to other people's ideas. And uh, luckily enough, they are kind enough to help out with some of these. But yeah, one of the things, again, I try to do, and a key word is try, right? Um, is to grab the user's attention as quickly as possible. So the starting part of the video, I try to add my little spin to it. I'm a video guy, I love video effects, I love video editing, I love special effects if it's done right. So I'm just gonna show you a little example of something I spent lots of time making. Uh, it's kind of like my show off, if you will, of all my videos and um, if I, Take a look at this video right here. This is my, again, we're not here to watch my YouTube video. That's not what we're here for. But there is this little twist that I try to create in every video to say, huh, oh, that's, that's cool, right? Or like, it's not something you see in every YouTube video, especially video for cars. People don't really play around with the special effects stuff. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit ahead here. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Tesla Canadian Dad. So I'm just noticing the video is a little choppy. Again, I'm just gonna close this other application and hopefully that makes it a little bit better here. All right, Dad, today we're going to talk about... Seriously, buddy, again? <laughs> hey, what's up, buddy? I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. So again, um, are you satisfied now? Yeah. Well, yeah, I just want to know more about this car. I want to know like what happens if you actually like run out of gas or power. That's better. So again, in this maybe 20 second clip, I spent probably over five hours just creating this. Um, obviously there's four versions of me in the one scene and that's what I try to, to, to entice my users with. Obviously I still want to have compelling content, but I want that wow factor right off the bat so that the user's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna keep watching. And hopefully that's what they do. And hopefully that they subscribe. Uh, the key word is obviously hopefully. But this is just one example here that um, I spent quite a bit of time just on that 20 seconds to put four of me inside the car because that's not, again, something that you see all over the place, especially for car videos. You might see it for video editing videos, but not a lot on the, uh, the car side of things. So again, um, just trying to put my own personality inside this video, you need to kind of be yourself, but I'll be honest with you, I do take a look at a lot of other online videos about what I like about the channel I'm subscribed to. So go take a look at the list of your channel you're subscribed to or channels that you watch a lot and why are you watching them? Ask yourself, why are you watching them? What makes it compelling for you? And then when you start your channel, you can not copy them, but use them as inspiration. I have a YouTuber that um, when it comes to the video side of things and the way he talks 
to his audience. I just love the way he just talks to his audience. And his name is Peter McKinnon. Some of you might have watched him before on YouTube. Uh, he's a Canadian YouTuber from Toronto. And he does give me ideas of how to create content, how to create compelling content, how to make my videos better. And that's something that you should be doing, right? Without actually, you know, um, completely just copying and trying to become him, right? You still want your personality, your own spin to it. And my spin, I like video editing. I like special effects. So I try to kind of implement some of that inside my videos, even though they're Tesla videos, I still want to add my own personality in so inside those videos. All right, I just did a little bit of a blurb there. Um, I apologize. Uh, but what I'd like to do uh, is kind of just give you a little tour, a behind the scene thing. When it, you are creating a channel, there is obviously things that you're gonna wanna do is obviously you're gonna wanna create potentially a logo for yourself. And uh, again, I just went with a clean TCD, Tesla Canadian Dad. It has a second meaning to me that I don't really share with people, but uh, it has a, another meaning behind the scenes where I wanted to make TC a positive thing instead of a negative thing. So I came up with Tesla Canadian Dad. I'm a proud dad of two daughters. Um, and yeah, that's that's the reason I went with it. A lot of people are saying, well, that you should have went Canadian Tesla Dad, but there's a reason, like I said. All right. Now, when you take a look at the behind the scenes, you can see your latest video. As I mentioned, my last video is not performing as usual. Um, you know, I have 184 views compared to uh, my number one most views in the first 17 days and 23 hours is 16,000 views uh, and then 15,000 views. So it's like, uh, we'll try to bounce back on the next one. And I've been stuck inside, so not really uh, been around the car too much. So it's kind of been hard to create a new video. But that being said, um, yeah, a little bit of information you get here. Obviously, the amount of subscribers, the last subscribers you got. Obviously, all your videos that you've seen here, and you can sort them by however you like. And the analytics side of things. And this is where it gets a little bit sometimes uh, scary, overwhelming, or um, I don't know. But there is a lot of information here. You. I found myself staring at these numbers way too much. Oh, just notice that there's a question. I apologize here. All right, Robin says iMovie. Yeah, iMovie, go for it, Robin, for sure. What if you don't reach? What if you don't reach a thousand in the next three months? Okay, so Robin, what happens is it's the last 365 days, right? So if I don't reach a thousand in the next three months, then the first subscribers I got for the first few months don't count for those numbers, right? So if I got 20 subscribers in the first month and then I'm at 13 months, those 20 subscribers don't count. And it just keeps going like that. Madeline, you just watched, I watched it last night as well, right? Uh, so uh, there's some interesting ones. Those were actually better, Madeline. Uh, the green screen ones were a lot better than the one that he paid for, right? All right, so good stuff. All right, let's go back to uh, behind the scenes stuff here. Uh, so again, you can see your views in the last 20 days. Actually, you can see an insane amount of uh, data here and you can kind of see the amount of people watching your content in right now i'm in the last 28 days i can actually change this if i change this to lifetime okay you can see how very slowly was it going up and then up oh, my first big burst here after the one of my videos just kind of kicked in and you can see here i have a big 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 burst that's actually when one of my videos this one right here the tesla model 3 it actually got featured in an online article about EVs. So I woke up one morning, I had, I think like, I don't know, four or 5,000 views. And by lunchtime, I had over 14,000 views. And I'm like, what just happened? Notice that my little brother actually noticed that the video, the video got mentioned in an article about EVs. 
and it just skyrocketed. Uh, so you never know, right? Now, again, the average view, you can see here 46 minutes, 32 minutes, 32, uh, 46%, 32%, 32%, 22%, 40%, 25%, 35%, 40%. Most Most of them are less than 50%. So you do want to grab, and this is not just me, like I said, uh, this is most users. The, the user will not stay for a long period of time. You need to grab the user's attention as quickly as possible. The scariest place on YouTube is the next tab right here. Okay, comments. Now, like I said, there's a lot of positive feedback and lots and lots of positive feedback. But one negative feedback tends to just kick you a little bit harder than all the positive ones. And it is something you need to, to kind of fight against, you know, letting it ruin your day. You do have the ability to delete any comments on your channel. So do, do know you do have the ability to delete them. Um, I only delete them if they're really, uh, you know, out of left field and negative. Uh, I don't get them a lot. But again, like I said, when it, it does happen, it, you know, it's not easy. So next big thing I want to talk about is audio. Not audio when it comes to you speaking. I'm talking about audio when it comes to the music. And if you ever want to potentially become monetized, you are not allowed to use any music. Even if you think, hey, I purchased this on iTunes. I can use it. I purchased it on iTunes. No, that's not how it works. There's copyright laws out there, and you can't just use any song. Now, audio music, YouTube actually has a library that you can actually use music from here for free. And there is free music and there's free sound effects that you can actually use for your videos. Now I wanted more, um, a lot more to be honest with you. So I'm using a different website here, um, which allows you to download an insane amount of music. Um, it's really well organized and insane amount of special uh, sound effects as well. So it is not cheap. However, it is about $14 a month. And uh, if I go take a look here. Log in right here very quickly. OK. Uh, kick me out. This virus made me not go on this website for a while. I haven't made a video in two weeks, like I said. So if you have the time to make more videos, obviously they kind of recommend you make at least one video a week. I wasn't able to do that. I found it too much. I like to, to edit my videos quite a bit, spend quite a bit of time on the editing side of things. And I have two kids, a full-time job at Elico. So uh, I didn't find the ability to create a, I, I, it's, it's just, it's not something I can do right now anyways, is create a video per week, uh, especially with the amount of time I like editing the video. So that being said, there's this awesome website that you can pretty much find any type of music with voices or no voices and insane amount of sound effects as well. So let's say I need, um, you know, some jet planes flying by. Go in the sound effect side and just play it. Maybe that's a little too slow, so I'm going to try a different one. That one has like a bit of a propeller sound to it. So maybe I tried a different one. So you can see here just for jet engines, like look how many there is. There's even more. Okay. There's 77 that are tagged for jet. So a ridiculous amount of options here when it comes to sound effects and audio. All right, I'm going to open it up for any kind of questions you guys have. 
regarding anything I've talked about or anything that you are kind of curious about. Um, at this point in time, you're more than welcome to enable your microphone, ask in the chat if you have a comments or question or curious about anything at all. So no comments, no questions. Some of my recommendations, great audio. Okay, just, just make sure that you have great audio. Video. Do yourself a favor, edit in 1080. Don't shoot in 4K if you don't need to, just because it does slow down your computers dramatically. It makes your life a lot more frustrating. Other things to keep in mind, watch other videos, learn. Always be learning, always try to be better, compelling. Create a YouTube channel about content you're passionate about, that you know well, and that you love talking about, to share, your passion with other people. Um, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it for what I have for you guys today. But like I said, I'm more than wel welcome to stick around if you guys want to talk one on one or you have a comment or a question, even suggestions. I'm more than open to different suggestions. If you guys have any ideas, um, by all means. I just noticed the chat doesn't actually come up. Uh, okay, so uh, how do you create a YouTuber account? So you literally just go, Robin, you can't unmute, that's weird. Robin, 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 Robin. There we go. Hey, Mike, it's Rob from this morning again. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. Yeah, great video. Um, yeah, I guess I wrote the question, but I guess if other people are listening, you could explain how to create an account. Yeah, of course. So I'm just gonna go in incognito mode and really all you have to do is create a YouTuber account. Any YouTube account can become a YouTuber account. So you literally just, did I not click on it? Oh, it's opening in my other window. So once you're on YouTube, you can sign in, which obviously we don't have an account. So you just click on create account for yourself and fill out this information. That's how hard it is. Once you've created that account, you have a YouTube channel. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel and you just don't know it, but it's there. And you have access to all the options you saw me use today is under if I go back to YouTube channel, so this is youtube.com. If you click on your profile picture at the top right, you'll see YouTube studio. That's where you access all that information. That's where you access your YouTube channel. But if you have a YouTube account, you have a YouTube, you have a cool. YouTube account, if you will. And before you did this, did you have just like your personal a uh, YouTube account where you were subscribed as yourself to other channels and did you have to kind of like separate them or? So as you can see, I can quickly go between them very, very easily. If I just click on the account here, I have switch account. You can sign in as many accounts as you want. And yes, you're correct. I have my personal one right here in the between. It just disappeared for some weird reason. I just clicked remove, didn't I? Oh no. That's okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, so you can see my, my personal one is right there. Okay. And, um, that's again, the one I use to watch videos on YouTube. Mostly, uh, the one, this one is my YouTube channel itself. And then I even have my work 
email YouTube account, which, uh, you know, I might go and just hit that like button on my videos from that account, who knows, <laughs> to help it out, you know? Uh, likes are a great way to improve your algorithm for YouTube, by the way. So always try to ask the users to like your video early on in your video. Um, maybe ask them to, you know, share the video, sure. Uh, but the like is definitely something that will improve your video's potential search algorithm for people to search your content. Cool, thanks Mike. And I was just wondering, um, have you tried iMovie? Because that's free and it comes with every Mac, right? Yeah, so again, iMovie is fantastic, easy to use. Um, I want more power, but if you're new to video editing, it's a great option for you, honestly, uh, because it's a little bit more simple. But the, the effects that you saw me do, um, for example, snapping the finger and uh, green screen and um, duplicating myself four times, those things are not really possible in a software like iMovie. Uh, mm -hmm. You do a little bit more juice, but if that's not what you're into, right? This is That's my thing, right? It doesn't need to be your thing as well. So yeah, iMovie is definitely an option out there that is completely free uh, for Mac users. And I think there's Windows editor or something like that that you can use for free on Windows as well. Thanks, Mike. Great question, Rob. Alex says, thank you for doing this course. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Alex. Juliana, if you don't make it to 365 days, you don't get completely restart or not. So again, it just, Juliana's kind of like what I explained a little bit earlier. If you don't reach um, the thousand subscribers and 4,000 views, it's the last 12 months. Right, so if you don't reach it, you don't start from scratch again. It's just like the last 365 days. That's that's where you have to reach a thousand subscribers in the last 365 days. And early on, right, early on, you're not going to get a lot of views unless you make it big right off the bat, which I would be a little bit jealous about. But hey, good for you, right? Um, so that being said. It's it's an ongoing thing. So it's the last 365 days. So once you hit a thousand subscribers in the last 365 days, uh, and 4,000 views in the last 365 days, then you can uh, become monetized and start making money off YouTube. NL uh, says, do you find there is too much content on YouTube to get attentions for your videos? Well, it is definitely something that is uh, hard. I actually started the YouTube channel back in August. And since then, more and more people have been buying Tesla Model 3s. And there's more and more competition for sure about uh, the Tesla Model 3s. So that's why um, I try to be a little bit different with the, the whole visual effects. Not a lot of people do that side of things when it comes to the car side. So I just put another passion of mine, which is video effects into my own videos to try to be a little bit different than everybody else. What I don't want to do, what I really, really, really don't want to, it's not for me, is create the same content as other people. I, I that's, that's something I try to stay away from. I don't want to just be another account that does the same thing, says, hey, there's a new update on your Tesla Model 3, here's what it is. It's not what I got into this for. At one point, I was trying to start making videos about just news about Tesla and I'm not a news anchor. That's not what I want to do. It's not fun videos for me to make and it's not why I got into this. So I was maybe pushing the line a little bit and getting too close to trying to get to a thousand subscribers rather than just do what I'm passionate about. And I kind of told myself if I'm going to continue doing this and at no point did I start thinking I was going to quit, but, um, if I am going to continue doing this, I'm going to have fun doing it. And I'm going to do videos I want to make, not videos I think people want to see. Um, and just videos that might get me to a thousand big subscribers faster. But again, I just, I want to enjoy doing what I'm doing. And that's why I started it. So is it, is there a lot of YouTube videos out there? Yeah, I just want to put my video out there for, because I enjoy making videos and Hopefully one day, maybe it is going to, you know, allow me to make a little bit of extra money on the side. Who knows? 
Jeffrey says, image stabilization, what do you recommend? Image stabilization, uh, so there is quite a few different options out there, right? You do have uh, cameras that have it. Smartphones, for example, like the latest iPhones have very good image stabilization implemented in the pro versions, uh, which is really, really good. Um, and then GoPros, in my opinion, have the best image stabilization. So if you're doing a lot of moving around, Jeffrey, if you're doing a lot of like, uh, I don't know, snowboarding or skateboarding and things like that, then those types of cameras are a must. Now, mirrorless cameras, technically, most of them don't have a very good image stabilization inside the cameras themselves, but you can buy a lens to add to the cameras that have image stabilization on. And that can become quite pricey, however. So if you're looking for the best image stabilization for a lot of fast moving parts, or fat, I, I do recommend something like a GoPro. Now you can always add visuals, the ability to add visual, uh, wow, image stabilization to your video post-production. But every time you do that, it increases the time it takes to edit a video. Um, there's your computer will slow down dramatically when you stabilize every single clip in your video. So keep that in mind, Jeffrey. Um, yes, you can do software image stabilization and the software side of things, but it makes it a lot more difficult to work with that video afterwards. It's actually, when I do need it, it's the last thing I do before I, I save and export the, doc, the, 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 uh, the project. So for example, let's say I needed some for the video, one of the videos here I have open. Um, let's say I wanted this video to be a little bit more stable for some reason. I would edit the whole video and once I have it, I can maybe mark it so that I know that I have to uh, do something to this clip and I can kind of add a comment here. And what that's going to allow me to do is, okay, at the end, of the, I'm done editing the video. I'm going to add image stabilization to this. Now I'm going to transition here. I'm just going to search for it. It's a lot faster. So warp stabilizer, just add that. But now you're going to notice this red bar here because it needs to analyze the video. It needs to figure out, again, what the camera movement is. And that will take time. You can see that right now it's at frames eight of 891. It's at 1%. It takes a lot of time. So if you have to do this for every clip of your video, Jeffrey, it becomes quite frustrating and it takes a long time to work with at that point. And then if you ever make a change to that clip, you need to run the stabilization all over again. That's a great question, though. Cole, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for subscribing as well. Really appreciate it. Uh, Juliana, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Christina, how long does it take to edit? Uh, again, it depends on the video I make. Um, I've made a video in a couple hours, <laughs> which I'm not proud of, honestly, personally. It's uh, the one I like the least. Um, and then I've made a video that I've edited for over a week. Not joking, the, this one right here, if I go back behind the scenes. So my latest video is a lot about uh, smart home and things like that. Uh, again, probably took three, two, two, two days to edit, quite a bit of work. Uh, the reaction videos here were actually quite easy to do. And that one probably took a couple, maybe four or five hours to do versus uh, this other one, which is can I drive my car to work a couple hours to do. My Tesla review took a couple of days to do. The Tesla Model 3, this is a five minute video. This is the funny part here, okay? I have a five minute video for this one. 
yet I recorded over like four hours of footage. <laughs> so it's so, so, like insane amount of footage. So organizing all that footage for five minutes probably took the most time here. Uh, the one of my most successful video took the least amount of time to edit, which is this one right here. He stole my Tesla. Um, that one, probably three, four hours again of editing. The one that I'm not really proud of is this next one here. It's the Tesla Cybertruck reveal. That one I did in like an hour and a half, two hours. And I just kind of wanted to get that excitement out there. Um, obviously the views kind of show um, compared to the other ones. The most I've spent on the video is this one right here, which is the uh, 23 things you should know in 300 seconds. That's the one that I duplicated myself four times. There's other videos where I duplicate myself. For example, I actually did it before with this video. That's the first one I did it with. Uh, but this one I duplicated four times myself in a car, uh, which was very challenging. And um, when it comes to the information, I passed along in that video. I needed to know the information well, so I needed to do some research. I don't even know how much time I spent on that, probably over 30 hours, honestly, which is ridiculous, I know, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed doing that part of it. Raymond Gagne, using the green screen, could a project video instead of a picture? Uh, could project, could the background be a, a picture? A video? Of course it could be a video, for sure. So the background can be a video on the green screen side of things, of course. Now there's actually some kits, I forgot to kind of bring it up here. Um, there's some kits that you can buy online on Amazon to potentially just get started, right? This one's a little bit more pricey because it has everything. It has the lights, um, it has the green screen, and it has everything. Now, when we're wrapping things up here, I'm going to play a behind the scene of what it looks like in my little studio downstairs. But um, yeah, again, you can potentially just buy the lights. Okay, good lighting is something that you, you do want because the better the lighting is, the more control you have in post production about how the video is going to look. Christina, who doesn't, right? They're so they're so awesome. <laughs> Now, if you are going to do a lot of potential smooth motion, smooth camera actions and things like that, that's where a stabilizer actually becomes quite useful for phones or for DSLR. In this case, it's a phone. Um, I don't use it very, very often, but it can be very, very useful. Uh, who was talking about image stabilization? Jeffrey. Jeffrey, can something like this can potentially help you create smooth footage? And for a hundred bucks, they go on sale. Uh, you know, you don't have to spend 128. I think I bought it for like 95 bucks. So it was on sale. Uh, and it just creates smoother video. Now, again, this is for a smartphone, but you can buy some for DSLRs as well. Microphones, camera kits. Again, in this case, you have a, a one shop setup for your phone, your camera, um, your lighting, your everything on this little thing. This this was a, like a must-have for me when I first got started. And then a gorilla pod, right? Um, in this case, so that you can do videos. And so if you're going to do vlogging videos, then obviously you want to be able to film yourself. We bill. Hey, I'm always up for new things. Is it on Amazon or elsewhere? Perfect. So that's for DSLRs, eh? Oh, there you go, back on Amazon. Wow, that's a good setup. Maybe not something you buy right off the bat, but great.
They even have a slot for your phone. That's fantastic. Cool, thanks for sharing that. Still analyzing the background for my warp stabilizer, by the way. Now I am doing other things, obviously, on my computer right now, so. But just, just an example, if you wanna do your stabilization on your camera as much as possible, so you don't have to do this post-production. It is one of the slowest things to wait for. Any other comments or questions? Those are great, I really love them. Coming up with ideas, that, that's the key right there. Uh, it just comes to me. Actually, one of the things I do kind of want to talk about is whenever something pops in your head, do something like this. I'm just going to bring this up. Just minimize this window, minimize to open this. So anyone mentions something that I should be doing or something that pops in my head, an idea or anything like that, I take out my phone, I have my Tesla section here and I have my episode ideas. And um, I just write them down as soon as they pop in my head because I'm going to potentially forget about it, right? So in this case here, you can kind of see all my notes here for different ideas. So this is the episodes I've done, um, you know, finally ordering the car, what I'm gonna talk about inside there how to wire a car, and then again, set up there, the home delivery, friends and family reaction, uh, accessible. So you can see here, I just have notes about everything that um, at one point I didn't do these. And then I have my ideas at the top for the future videos. Uh, again, my next one that I wanna do is new Tesla update version one preview, which is uh, not real. Uh, I'm gonna make the car fly, but because like I said, this is something I like the special effects side of things. I'm actually waiting on Amazon for the uh, poles to hold my green screen to be able to green screen my car and make it look like I'm flying with my drone. Um, so again, I just whip the ideas here. Again, Tesla cyber card, there's a colleague or a friend of mine online on, a, on Tesla group that just got his car wrapped. So like a, like a cyber truck. So again, I'm gonna meet him at one point when this core team is done. Then I have my Star Wars idea as well. Uh, again, a little bit out there, but visual effects and things like that still related to Tesla. And again, the top five things wrong with Tesla, I still haven't made that, but I still leave it there in case I want to make one of those. Uber riders react to Tesla. I almost signed up to Uber to just get people in the car and react to the car. Uh, but the insurance side of things, and yeah, it just that's something I haven't removed it, but yeah, I just, Whenever I have an idea, I just bam, pop, pop in, in the notes app, simple as that. And uh, if it's my idea, great. If it's somebody else's idea that they, they friends and families are great for, for suggestion things. Sometimes you might not do everything they, they tell you to do, but at least, you know, they, they're, they might be thinking outside the box a little bit. My latest video is an idea from my friend. <laughs> it's not working really well, but it's an idea from a friend, which is uh, he was curious to know how to do the whole smart thing. So, yeah. So if you're looking for a good camera, get Explore One HD camera, Christina says. So, so coming up with ideas, what I don't do, Alex, is I try not to just copy another video I've seen online. It's not, what I want to do. I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying it's it's not what I want to do. Explore one HD. Uh, 
All right, so it's like a GoPro. That's the whole thing? 60 bucks. Is there any image stabilization on there? Features. Doesn't mention it. Is that just a casing? No, that's the product. It is sold out, yes. A lot of things are sold out today, right? Even toilet paper. We live in a weird time. All right. Other comments or questions? Cool, very good, thank you. Okay, Mom, if you don't mind, we can chat after, if that's okay. So I'm gonna leave you with a behind the scene. And uh, yeah, this is my house. So you're gonna see a lot of kids toys, but I make it work. And apparently I closed the video. So just wanna thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, a lot of fun to talk about this with people. This is not something I get to do a lot um, because I typically teach web stuff, but I really appreciate um, Elko letting me do this. And uh, actually they came up with the idea. Um, so I uh, really appreciate that. And uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Like I said, I really appreciate it. And you know, if you are going to start a YouTube channel, you know, let me know. I'd love to, to watch it. I'd love to potentially support it. I'd love to try um, just to see what you guys are up to. Really, really appreciate it. Rigwheels.com for camera car rigging. Yes, for sure. Madeline, good stuff. Um, it is something that can be very, very useful to, uh, to rig GoPros and other devices to your car for sure. So again, this is uncut. Just I thought I would record the behind the scenes setup for the video I did the, or, or when we started. It's nothing dramatic or, you know, just to show you that if you have room, you can kind of create your own content. Thank <laughs> you.